there's so much happening in Duluth in terms of murals. It's like almost become like the mural city. So that like became even more so. We have got to do something at West Duluth, you know. We bought the building a year before we opened. Opening day was July 1st, 2017. Somewhere in that year when we were doing the renovating and fixing up the building, we got approached by a muralist in West Duluth, Tom Napoli, about whether we would be interested in a mural for our front facade, so uh, which we hadn't even considered. Um, and we said sure, and it was an absolute smashing success. As I think everybody knows who's seen it, it literally electrified the West Duluth community, and it's very, very recognizable and, and a beautiful mural and a statement on reading and books. And once the last brush stroke went down in that mural, the next thing that I started thinking about and coveting was the possibility of a mural on the side, because this is such a great wall and such a great space. I was at a truck stop in Wisconsin with a bag of cheese curds and uh, Bob was hitchhiking. Um, he needed a ride back to Minnesota and on the way home we talked about this possible mural project which uh, is here today. Love it. Cool <laughs> yeah. I knew Jonathan really from the book world first. He's an illustrator of one of our very popular children's books, Bow Wow Pow Wow. I was hired to be the author because the story takes place in Red Lake, Minnesota, which is where I'm from, which was a story that is part fact and part fiction, kind of a historical account that was weaved into a children's story or a family story. He learned about his art kind of got to know him, and he just seemed like such the perfect choice for an artist for the mural. Obviously, sitting across from somebody who owns a bookstore, I was thinking about, you know, like, man, we need to uh, sort of collaborate on this story element, right? We talked, I jotted down a very rough sketch that had some of the elements that not only I like to think remind me of my experience here on the shore of Lake Superior, uh, but also sort of speak to, you know, like, I guess family values, intergenerational storytelling, you know, the sharing, the importance of sharing stories and history um, and imagination. Most of all, inspiration, you know, the inspiration that comes from just hearing a good story and finding out like what you can do with that information. I did a rough sketch. Over the last five years, Bob and I have checked in about this project multiple times. Eventually, the stars aligned, you know, between our timelines, our schedule, me being in a place where I could come up with a full draft of that original sketch that I did five years ago. This is totally his vision, his ideas. My history with books is one facet to my history with storytelling and my storytelling is kind of how I express myself in my art and each piece that I create is kind of a vignette so it's almost like you're, you're getting you know like a glimpse of a moment from what can be a larger story. I came up with something that is the lake, it's family. I like to incorporate this Mishibiju character into my work nowadays. Something that speaks to me, it's a story about protecting our resources and as uh, people who live on the largest freshwater uh, body of water in the entire world, you know, we're sort of like stewards here. We live here and it's our responsibility to take care of things. So that Mishibiju character, I was told, is kind of like that. So I like to paint it, you know, my own way. You can see, uh, this is kind of like my rendition of it in the child's hand. It's actually a little stuffed animal version of the Mishibiju. I have a 17-month-old boy. He's named Minnow. Minnow is an Ojibwe word that uh, we use to preface things where we let you know we're about to speak about something in a good way. I needed a couple models. So being somebody who works from home, you know, I asked my partner Tashia if she minded sitting with the kid with a book and she agreed to it. She's very modest, you know, and humble, so I had to kind of convince her. I told her that I would stylize the image enough so that it, it could be, you know, anybody, I guess. But yeah, that was the drawing, and fatherhood has definitely changed my practice and kind of 
reinforced some of the ways that I approach my messages and my work and stuff like that. There was a lot of planning, a lot of preparation. Uh, I had to do a lot of research. This is my first mural of the scale, so I needed to make sure that I knew everything that I needed to know going in. You use points to upscale your drawing, except for there are a ton of unique points because the wall is so big you don't want to get lost in a series of squares. So I did a full color drawing because I wanted everything to be mapped out, much like an architect would create a blueprint. I didn't want there to be too much decision making on the wall. There's a little editing on the wall, but when you're 20 feet up on a scissors lift and the wind is blowing, your decision making can become very limited. So basically it's a road map on how the image will go and I was able to transfer it directly from the drawing that I just look at on my phone to the uh, doodle grid and it actually worked really effectively. Uh, I'd say it got me about 90% of the way there and then the rest of it is kind of coming over here and standing back and going, oh, you know, that eye needs to be just up like a centimeter higher or something like that. I love it. I mean, what I love about it is like the combination of, it speaks to storytelling, it speaks to reading, it speaks to community. There's industrial Duluth is represented, um, indigenous community is represented. Um, there's just so many pieces in it that make it, you know, really something that's accessible for everybody and I think the community will feel very proud of and enjoy for years. Maybe a total of 14 days to get to the back wall and then I guess at that point you know we'll see if we can stick a fork in it. That's sort of the projection you know it'll be 10 to 14 days in total. I'm out here about uh, I would say anywhere between 8 to 12 hours just trying to do you know as much as I can. I'm really happy to be in West Duluth. You know, the community has really kind of like reached out to let me know that I'm welcome. A lot of the folks that live around here too have told me how this parking lot, you know, was a place where they would meet during the early pandemic restrictions. So they're really happy to see the color, you know, and some new inspiration in the parking lot itself. So going into a community, you know, as an artist who is going to create a public work of art. You can't always expect that you're going to please everybody because if you're pleasing everybody then you're probably doing it wrong. But I would say that my welcome here has been uh, overwhelming and very great. And it's a thrill, you know, I love it out here. I, I don't mind the long hours and I get to visit with my wife and kid, you know, throughout the project, so that's all right. <laughs>